Hi, this is Rob Grimes with Tech Advisor Media and the IFBTA, and I'm here with Lee Zucker, who's the Director of Enterprise Sales at Constant Contact Single Platform. Yep. That, that's actually a mouthful. Yeah, it, now, it is. <laughs> you started with them before it was a mouthful. You I, were I on did, the single yeah. platform. It was just single side. platform, nice and easy. Single platform. <laughs> and, and were you early on in single platform? Yeah, I think I, I was somewhere between employee number 10 and number 15. Employee number 10 and 15. And so you were part of the transition to Constant Contact. Yes, I was. So what brought that all about? Uh, so what brought it all about? Well, uh, you can say the money, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so Constant Contact uh, has historically been a, um, a a loyalty customer engine to, to get people to come back in the door through email marketing and deals and all of their different suites of services. Everybody uses. It. Yeah, exactly. Right. They're they're really well known within the email marketing space, all of that. Um, but they didn't have a tool to get new customers in the door of these small businesses and these enterprises and franchises and whatnot. Well, what Single Platform does is we get all the most important information for any business out to this network of different publishers. So Constant Contact thought, well, you know, we need some right. sort of uh, new customer generation feed for all of our businesses, and then we have the loyalty side. So they acquired Single Platform to get new customers into these businesses. So you're really able to bridge the gap. If you want to think about it, Constant Contact's uh, communication methods are used traditionally after you've already acquired. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So I mean, that's exactly what you're saying here. Mm -hmm. But also, when you communicate and you acquire, you have to bring them in from all different sources. Exactly. So how do you fit in that role? Yeah, so Single Platform is getting small business content to large restaurant groups and franchises, all of their information out to Google and Yahoo and Bing and Yelp and Foursquare, Urban Spoon, TripAdvisor, anywhere where a potential customer is looking to um, get some food. Um, they, you know, they're going on those different sites, they're finding uh, restaurant information, they're finding menus, they're finding photos and hours, and essentially they're then going into a restaurant or a business because of the information that they see. But it isn't just the restaurant business, is it? Uh, it has expanded. Um, well, since I was going to say, I'm sure you might have come in on the restaurant exactly. business, but so where's it gone to? Uh, it has gone to any vertical that has a list of products and services that wants to get new customers in the door. So, so we're doing retail, I mean, we're doing retail, hospitality. Retail, hospitality, salons and spas, yoga studios, fitness studios. Have they taken you globally? Uh, not globally, all domestic. And that's really because of our publisher network just now. I mean, we're, we're working with Google really domestically, Yellow Pages domestically. But doesn't Yelp. that become much easier you know, in this, in this world today because a lot of those partners are certainly global? Uh, yeah, and, and I, I think that you know, at, at some point we could potentially glo go global. I would love to start a team somewhere, somewhere abroad. I think that'd right. be a lot of fun. But as of right now, we're completely domestic. So tell me about the word enterprise in your title. What Ent exactly does that mean? Enterprise is dealing with all large groups and franchises. So we realize that um, any big restaurant group or restaurant franchise or really any sort of business that has a, you know, hundreds of locations to thousands of locations requires a different type of service. Um, the way that they interact with these public is often different. The teams that they have internally that work with uh, companies like Single Platform are often different than on the small business side. So on the enterprise side, we act as like an agency model. So although Single right. Platform is a SaaS product, um, what we do is we act as an agency into this network of publishers, have a full account management team, data team, working on behalf of all of our largest But is clients. there a solution for the smaller clients as well? Yep, absolutely. And who sells that? Uh, we have a big team of salespeople and Is that and the sales local managers. community salespeople? Yep. That, that are selling that? Exactly. And is it something that you can uh, buy off the web? Yep, you can buy online. You can go to singleplatform.com. Um, you can actually apply for a 30-day free trial, see how it works. You get set up with an account manager and everything like but that. But they don't and, get to meet you um, unless they're in there. They don't get to meet me unless <laughs> they uh, have a whole bunch of locations. Right, so the, so the moral of the story there is, is you got a great idea, you got to grow it, then you get to meet Lee, right? Yeah, exactly. So, and then so that's a good thing. So points of differentiation. You know, you're in a, I mean, the buzzwords here. I mean, the buzzwords here, mobility, connecting with the guest, you know, payments, all these different things are buzzwords here this year. Yep. So how do you differentiate yourself from the competition? What, what is it that's making you different? Because people have a lot of choices, they're getting confused. So, mm -hmm. so how do you differentiate? Yeah, so within the listing space, we look at basic content. So basic content being name, address, phone number, which is of course important to have and important for that to be correct and everything. Where single platform really started and our, our biggest core model is with all of that rich content. The content that makes people decide on like why they want to go into a restaurant or why they're going to go get their haircut at this one place right. or get a massa massage or whatever it might be. And that's the of products and services, that's the menus, that's the prices, that's the hours, that's the photos of the environment that really draw 
draws people in to the actual business. So right. that information is always changing. It's so difficult to update on these networks. So really focusing on that rich content has been one big differentiator for us, um, as well as the size of our publisher network. But, but actually, aren't you also competing with some of the publishers? Uh, no, not really. So what these publishers realize is that um, before single platform, all, all of these businesses were, whether it be restaurants, lawn, spa, is they were a name address and a phone number. And that was it. Right. And so when somebody was going to a search engine, 70% of people are choosing businesses based on search results. And so if people are going to a publisher and they can't find out what makes this restaurant different from this one, um, well, essentially they're doing the publishers a disservice, or they're, you know, the customer is not happy. Right. The publishers are not providing the customer what they want and the restaurants are being disserved by the publishers because they're not able to display right. you know, their most important information. You know, uh, one of the challenges that's been brought up uh, by some of the seminars and speakers and people that are here at FS Tech you know, has been the idea of integration, that no system should stand on its own, its own silo. It has to integrate, whether it's the point of sale, the back office, the data, analytics and things. So how do you fit into that environment? Yeah, well, there, there are a bunch of different ways. What we see most commonly is restaurant groups will almost use a single platform as the, no pun intended, but single point to manage all of their most information online, on their Facebook page, on Twitter, and on their own website. Right. So instead of using their third party or their agency to call them and be like, hey, we want to update this location's right. menu, single platform is that central point where it's not only going to update on their website, it's also going to update on their Facebook page, they're going to be able to post out to Twitter when there are changes, post announcements, and then as well as this entire network of But is there a data websites. connection on the back end that also helps to collect the analytics and the data that comes from the publishers? Yeah, exactly. So we're able to show these uh, restaurant groups where they're getting most of their traffic, how much time people are actually spending on their listings, uh, and a whole bunch Is of Is there any tie-in at all to the checks or the actual transactions themselves? Yeah, so we are actually coming out with a, or it is Oh, I just asked you the launching. right question yes, for where you're going? Exactly. Okay. So soft launching, uh, I guess, a new product. Um, and it basically, you know, the, the biggest challenge for any marketer or anybody within like like this enterprise mm -hmm. or franchise space is proving that there's a transaction or proving that there's actual money right. coming into a business. Giving an ROI. Exactly, after seeing this on Yellow Pages or right. Google or whatever. What we're doing is we're now putting an order now or a redeem a gift card or a you know redeem this coupon or whatever on all of these different listings so that when somebody finds one of the restaurants on say Google or on Yellow Pages or on Foursquare, they're able to be directed straight back to that restaurant's website right. and place an order right there. And that's Well, that fact. would be good for online ordering. What happens if somebody uh, gets it and then comes in-house? If it comes in-house, um, maybe it could be a coupon. That can't necessarily be tracked. What we can track is basically what's you know normal advertising analytics online right. is you know time on site. Well, or if you give them an offer, if you tie it to the overall loyalty, yep. you certainly can... Uh, you certainly can do that. Yeah, and we're partnering with tons of different online ordering applications and loyalty and gift card, um, what we call them as transaction providers. Now, are you also doing any kind of integration with people like LinkedIn and, and some of the other side that's getting out to different communities? Um, a, a little bit, not so much. It's mainly Facebook and, and Twitter as of right now. Um, LinkedIn, we haven't seen you know a small business or even really an enterprise business right. like you know want to publish the information that gets a new customer. We see like LinkedIn as a tool that gets um, people that you know want to want a new job you know, right. into their business. So, or what's interesting about this is obviously the constant contact piece took you into some new markets and areas that you guys weren't focused in. Mm -hmm. Now, so I get that. So, what about some new um, other types of products? Like, for instance, I've seen some people that will consolidate job postings. Mm -hmm. Now, you would think that the same engine, the same tool that's doing this and sending it out to the publishers one way could also do things for the employee side. And are there things like that in the works, or have you guys yeah. looked at that? We're, we're looking into d tons of different ways how essentially this like AP, these APIs that feed into these different publishers, the way that we can disseminate different types of information. It's pretty much the same sort of process, right? Exactly. Yeah, so we're looking into all different types of, of ways that we can send information to these publishers. We have partnerships with MindBody, for example. MindBody Online is a um, yoga studio. Well, now it's funny because I'm actually a MindBody customer. Oh, okay. I, I have a company that uses MindBody as, as our platform. It's a fitness uh, company, so it's funny that you've... Uh, yeah. 
small world. I'm, I'm just sort of wondering if he knew that. You know? <laughs> no, I, I didn't know well, that. I should be a single platform customer then, there right? There you go. I, I got to have to look at that. Give me my card. You might have my information. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so Constant Contact is a partnership with MindBody. So does Single Platform. So all these yoga studios and fitness studios that want to book appointments but also publish their content and then re-engage their loyal customers, we realize that we we feel like we have the perfect pieces of the puzzle to make you know businesses be able to manage their presence online, both on the acquisition front for right. new customers, but also on the loyalty side. Well, so, I, so I've actually learned something new here that, uh, that I'm going to have to uh, take a look at Good. as soon right. as we're done. <laughs> um, but you know, you're here at FS Tech. Now, I, I know that not all these areas that are here at FS Tech are your area, but mm -hmm. you're certainly interested. Is there some aha moment that you've had so far here at FS Tech, either on the floor looking at a product or listening to a speaker? Yeah, actually, um, the, first, uh, the first marketing breakout session that uh, I introduced, it was a standing room only uh, session. Like there weren't enough seats for the amount of people that were in there. And so I think what I realized is that, like looking at the operating operator list before the show, it's a lot of CIOs, CTOs, right. very few marketing people. But going to this marketing breakout session, all the people in the standing room were CIOs, CTOs, because the technology side of all of these restaurants are combining with the marketing And they side. realize how important it is to work with marketing. Exactly. Um, so I think that that was my aha moment. Like, look, the, these, two, these two divisions of these restaurant industries are but coming together. But maybe a year ago it wasn't that way. Exactly. And maybe and now it's coming we around. We found that because you know, when we were speaking with restaurant groups a year ago, uh, the marketing department would make the decision, and then the CTOs would come and be like, wait, what is that? I don't know what you, you know, why'd you make that decision? Now the conversations are happening in the same room. Great. Well, Lee, thank you very much for joining us yeah, today. Thank and, you for your time. And it's great having you here at FS Tech uh, as well uh, as usual. So this is Rob Grimes for Tech Advisor Media, for the IFBTA, and also for FS Tech. And you can find us on the web at techadvisormedia.com. So thank you for joining us.